Let us begin our service today with the daily word, and the word today is joy. Joy is my constant companion. I discover reasons to feel joyful every day, even in the most challenging circumstances. I begin by centering my awareness on the Christ, the divine presence within. I feel love and peace and lift my heart and possibilities for good fill my thoughts. I am joyous. I may experience joy as exuberance, delight, and wonder. Joy may also come quietly as the peaceful assurance of God's presence wherever I am, whatever I am doing. My awareness of joy brings a glow to even the most ordinary day. As I engage wholeheartedly in all that is mine to do today, I share my joy with everyone through kind words, a sunny smile, and a warm welcome to everyone I meet. I radiate joy and bless the world with my positivity, happiness, and bliss. And from Psalms 118, 24 reads, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Joy is my constant companion. So let us get still. Let us take joy as my constant companion into our hearts. So we imagine our heart opening wide and joy flying in with wings of excitement and exuberance, it fills our heart. And in the passing of our heart, it fills our entire being with the joy, the life force, the knowingness that God resides within us, that we are never separated from the truth of God. So we allow ourselves to just take this moment to pause, allow ourselves to reset our thinking, put aside all that's going on around us and in the world, and we just give ourselves permission to be still at this moment to feel the very presence of God, for God does reside within each of us. So we give forth to this feeling and this companion that we call God, breathing, living, and being within us as the Spirit of God. So we just breathe and we allow ourselves to just be here right now, being with God. So ever so gently, bring ourselves back to this time and place of now, and in our own way, give gratitude for this time to just be in the presence of God and to feel connected. And so it is, amen. And so it is, amen. 
Today is lesson two of six in Lessons of Truth by Emily Cady. In today's two chapters, we're going to focus on thinking and faith. And last week, we learned that God is everything coming into visibility through the human form. Our intelligence, love, wisdom are all manifested through God via our humanness. There is only one mind, and that's God mind, the spirit of God. We are able to have thoughts that sometimes are not necessarily good because we are not puppets. We have free will and choice, and this is what we call our mortal mind. Man is a threefold being. First is spirit, which is the innermost part of us. Then there is soul, which is the clothing of the spirit. And the body is the external clothing of the soul. Mortal mind is also sometimes referred to as carnal mind. Whichever you resonate more with is where error consciousness lives. And sometimes error consciousness can really give us a form of some stinking thinking and create havoc in our life. Because it is through this error consciousness that we create the notion of lack and fear and sadness and grief. There are two types of seekers. There are those who need to have proof and there are those who go on faith believing that God guides us when we allow spirit to flow through us. Each soul has direct access to God. We can seek out books, teachers, and study, but until we are as little children, which is open and receptive, we don't really enter the kingdom of God. We come close, but we don't enter. We will eventually, but this is the long way. The shortcut is to go within and seek the truth of who you are. The five senses are for the mortal man, while the spirit of God is for the spirit of man. The senses will take ourselves away from spirit, which in turn causes pain and sorrow, disappointment, and lots of ways that we have wrong thinking enter our life, what I call stinking thinking. When we listen to the wisdom of God, and we can take appropriate action, because we are listening to the wisdom of God and not the mortal mind, which can lend us many different directions. When we keep our thoughts on the external world and of others, these are temporal things, and they will seem very real due to our senses. So we go within and you will see there these temporal things disappear and you will again reestablish yourself with God. Go within and we turn our conscious mind back toward the universal mind. For God is spirit and resides in this universal mind. Let the mind of God be your every thought, not the mortal mind. God is all, God is good all the time, everywhere. We know this to be our truth. God never changes, no matter what we do or may have done. Forget the senses for guidance. Follow God's guidance instead. Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Whatever we want is in the surrounding invisible substance. And faith is the power which can bring it out into reality. There are two kinds of faiths. There's blind faith, an instinctive trust in a power higher than ourselves. And it, it is part of our intuition, a truth which, which, which we are not at the time conscious of. It's blind faith. The other kind is understanding faith, and it's based on immutable principle. Faith is not about the senses, it is about the truth. 
So I want to share with you on page 55 of Emily Cady's book, Lessons in Truth, and it reads this. The supply of every good always somewhere awaits the demand. Another truth or fact is that the demand must be made before the supply can come forth to fill it. You see, our mortal mind will take us off into all different directions of lack and almost seemingly powerlessness of seeking things to satisfy our senses. But the spirit of God and the spirit of our mind is demanding us to seek out what it is we need. You see, Webster defines a promise because our definition of faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, is a promise. And Webster defines a promise as something sent beforehand to indicate that something unseen is at hand, the right to expect and claim the performance of an act. I promise I'll be there at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. We count on that. It's an invisible substance that we know will happen because we trust that commitment. And so the promise of God is that through the demand, the supply will be there. And we do this through faith. Faith is the promise of what is to come. And what our faith needs to reside in the things we want more of in our life. Why would we allow the fact, our faculty of faith to give us lack? Rather, we want more abundance. We want our needs met, not only for ourselves, but for others. We want our faith to, to not bring things that cause us anguish and hurt. The supply of every want awaits our demand. And so if we turn to page 56, again in Lessons of Truth, we read, desire in the heart is always God tapping at the door of your consciousness with this infinite supply, a supply which is forever useless unless there is a demand of it. You see, God is tapping at our hearts. And when we go within and feel that tapping, and we recognize the, de the desire, we then can ask for that desire to be fulfilled. It is the law of faith that promises that that supply will be met, but we must first desire and ask for it. The supply is there waiting to be asked. So what do you want more of in your life? And we go within and we can feel the tapping of our hearts and that is God calling forth the desire. You see, God knows what we desire before we're aware of it. He, God is already providing and has provided that for us. And this is where the notion comes that there is no lack in the universe and yet the mortal mind shows us lack everywhere. That's the stinking thinking part. It shows that there is not enough and we read and we experience people's lives not having enough, our own lives not having enough. And yet, faith says to believe in the substance of the indivis indivisibil indivisibility that resides within us to produce this supply. The supply is there. We just must ask and the demand will be met. We don't have to beseech God for this for it is there for the asking. But the demand must be made before the supply becomes manifest in our lives because our desire comes from God and God knows the desires of our heart before we know it and ask for it. So there's an affirmation that I would like to share with you today. And so I'm going to share my screen for all of us to see. And our faith affirmation, and I'd like you to read this with me if you'd be so kind. All things whatsoever I pray and ask for, believe that I will receive them 
and I shall have them. Let's read that again. All things whatsoever I pray and ask for, believing that I will receive them, and I shall have them. <coughs> I invite you to write this down, and of course, you can pause this video so you have time to write this down. But this is your homework. I would like you to write this affirmative statement down 100 times before midnight tonight. All things whatsoever I pray and ask for, believe that I will receive them and I shall have them. I want this to be in the forefront of your thinking. I want you to let go of what you think is impossible, but rather seek out what it is you desire, knowing that there is the possibility always of receiving them. So we pray and we ask for, believing that I will receive them and I shall have them. For it is immutable law, the truth of God, that in the faith of this you seek, the demand is made and the supply is provided for. And remember to follow the wisdom and guidance of God, for it is there that leads us to the demand and the asking to be fulfilled. So I thank you for this time, and I thank you for listening to this talk, and I see the Christ as you. And so I thank you for this opportunity, and so it is, amen. We are fully supported by your loves and tithe offerings. Please continue to freely give to our ministry, and for all your gifts forthcoming, we are grateful, and so it is. Amen.